Hi there, this is Brian Hilbert with uh, Angler's Covey and last week we covered tying the trico which is the bug of the month. Today we're going to be talking about how to fish for the tricos. Uh, we're out here on the South Platte River, beautiful morning, a few tricos starting to fly around. We're going to cover a couple of tactics to help you have more success out on the water. So there are several factors that go into what will determine how much success you have out on the river when it comes to fishing the trico hatch. Uh, most importantly, in my opinion, is presentation and getting a good drag-free drift. Now, it's certainly important to have the right fly on, uh, having the right size and profile. First, I want to talk about um, how I set up uh, my dry fly rig here when we're fishing tricos. Now, we're out here, there's a few flying around, a couple of duns that are on the water. The fish really aren't coming up yet. Um, <clears throat> my, my rig is going to consist of, I'll always start out with fishing a I like a compared dun style uh, trico that can be both imitative of the dun and the spinner. And off of that, I'm usually fishing a drowned trico tied on a heavy wire hook that's going to sit just under the surface. Um, what's going to help me get a drag free drift is a very long leader. I'm fishing a 9 foot 5x leader. Um, that's going to help me be able to mend and control my line without affecting the drag of the fly uh, and get a good presentation to these fish. Um, that, I'm, that I'm casting to. Now, <clears throat> the, the, the trico hatch can be so prolific uh, and dense, and these trout see a ton of the real deal on the water that they can get extremely selective about what they want to eat. Um, if you are dragging your fly just a little bit or are too far one way or the other, they're not going to move to eat the fly. And because there's so much options of, of, the, of the real fly, um, there's a lot of times they're not going to move, you know, even just six inches over to eat your fly. You're going to have to put it right on the money. So it can seem like you're casting and casting and casting and casting, and you'll second guess, do I have the right fly on? Do I need to move? When in reality, uh, thoroughness is, is the answer, in my opinion, to just really put several drifts over that fish until you get it just right to where he wants to come up and eat it. <clears throat> so the first thing that I'm going to do when I step out onto the river and I'm, I'm inspecting the area I want to fish is where do I start fishing to? Now, it can be pretty obvious where the fish are. You'll see them rising. Um, right now, we're seeing a few noses come up. Again, it hasn't really started yet, uh, but a couple of the places that I'm looking for they are going to be ideal for fishing, both the dun and spinner fall, uh, are going to be looking out here. We have a really nice seam that comes down, and those fish will sit right on that phone line and eat the adults as they're drifting down. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the different cast that I like to use uh, when it comes to presenting my dries to try uh, fish rising to trichos um, from both upstream and downstream. <clears throat> so as I approach this, one of my favorite ways to present my fly to trout that are rising like this um, is to do a down and across presentation. Um, my favorite way to present my fly here is doing what's called a reach cast, where I'm going to do my normal cast but almost mend in midair, which is going to allow my fly line to land above the fly and give a better drag free presentation as it comes through where the fish are. The way I accomplish this is I'm going to do my normal cast in midair. I'm going to reach my rod over and let everything land upstream and let that drift through where the fish are. This allows my fly to be presented to the trout first. They don't see my fly line. It's a very stealthy approach. It doesn't require a lot of mending. So one thing I hear, um, one thing I hear all the time is, um, you know, trichos. They're a very small bug, and um, when you're casting that dry fly out there, it might be a size 20, 22, or even 24. It can be incredibly difficult to spot that on the water, especially in the middle of a hatch where there's a lot of competing bugs that look exactly the same. Um, so one thing I'll do for my clients, or, or recommend even just to 
um, people that come into the shop is to use a real small um, either hopper or flying ant, some sort of a tractor dry fly, and then off of that I'll do about 14 to 16 inches and, and put my trico off of that. So it's much easier to follow this hopper ant on the water and what I tell folks is watch that hopper and if anything comes up and sips within a foot or so around the hopper to set the hook. Um, it, it really makes it easier to follow your fly and um, you'd be surprised how effective that is. As long as we're using a, a, you know, a small terrestrial or a caddis, something that's not going to offend the fish, um, this is a very good technique um, if, you have, if you have trouble finding that dry fly out on the surface. Now I have my drowned trico at the tag end of my dry. What I'm looking for for a take there is just a boil under that adult or anywhere near it. These fish know right away when they put that fly in their mouth. There's one. That uh, it's made of iron and not squishy like the real thing. So, you can see I had to make a couple dozen casts right there to right on that seam line probably put this fly in front of that fish half a dozen times. Finally took it. On a small hook and light tip it. I'm gonna fight these guys with some upstream rod pressure. That way once he gets good and tired this lift and I'm trying to bring him right to my neck here. We uh, briefly talked about how important presentation is uh, when it comes to presenting uh, a dry fly during the trico hatch. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have your cast really dialed and to be extremely accurate when you're presenting a fly to, to rising trout. Um, it's a good idea to head to your local park and put out a target and just practice casting, uh, hitting that target. And don't do something big like a hula hoop borrow your dog's collar or something small. Um, this is a game of inches. Six inches too far to the left or right uh, can be the difference between getting that fish to come up and, and a refusal. Um, as, you, as you saw there, casting against the bank, um, I was doing a long upstream cast. Still doing that reach cast where when I was firing it upstream, I was extending my arm to get that, uh, that built-in mend to the drift and then just stripping it as it came back to me. That allowed my fly to get a nice drag-free drift right over those fish, and, and we had several uh, that decided uh, that they wanted to eat it. It worked really well for us. So as the trico hatch goes on throughout the summer, um, early on you might come out to the river and just have a, a banner day where it seems like they're eating everything. Um, a month later, maybe they're a little bit more picky. Two months later, they're definitely a lot more picky. And uh, really, fly selection comes into play a lot more at that time as you progress through the summer. Um, I can't uh, emphasize enough the importance of carrying a variety of sizes um, and different overall trico patterns from spinners and duns, uh, cripples, drowned tricos. If you need any help at all with fly selection, uh, definitely come into the shop, grab anybody there. They'll be happy to help you out. Everybody is super knowledgeable about uh, their favorite trico patterns that work and uh, are happy to pick out supplies that'll have you help you have success out on the water. So that concludes uh, Bug of the Month for July, which is trico. Um, hope you guys got a lot out of this video. Um, we're really excited about Bug of the Month next month, which is terrestrials. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe. 
and uh, follow along and be on the lookout for that video here next month in August where we talk about terrestrials. Change your mind,